Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Duplication Nation MLM podcast. That's an old corny saying. The, um, the teachers would say, the police would say, back in my days as an incorrigible youth, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. And what is the crime? The crime is when you break the law, which is what leads us to our delightful topic today, the incontrovertible, uh, that's a tough word, the incontrovertible laws of network marketing, the 10 laws. Um, this is something I had a little fun with that I think you can have a little fun with. Um, and really a good episode to share with the people on your team. Um, and this is one of those episodes that um, I think it'll benefit everybody in the business, right? Um, but it isn't something to show them their first night, right? There's a rapid start guide that we have on <clears throat> duplicationnation.com and um, my upcoming book, which will be out maybe in April, um, the ABCs of MLM. There's stuff to give people right away their first 24 hours in the business. This is a, this training here, I think this is be, be really good to, to have someone review this after a month or two they've been in the business. So they start to, now they kind of know where some of the bodies are buried. They've faced a little rejection. They have probably had some challenges in terms of getting the duplication they want, maybe a little uncertain in their abilities, lacking a little confidence. And I think this training will be very helpful for them. So let's jump into it. The number one is the law of personal responsibility. This is just one of those universal success principles. You're going to hear me go back to this over and over in all of my work. You can be a victim, you can be a victor, but you can't be both. You have to choose and you definitely want to choose wisely here. Uh, the, where how we apply it here is you're responsible for your team, for your group, for your bonus check. Your sponsor, it's not their job to build your team for you. You don't get to blame it on your sponsor when it isn't working. You don't get to blame it on the economy. You don't get to blame it on the government. We know that there are people in the same situation as you are in or I am in or much, much worse, and they're still building a business successfully. And very likely for 99.99999% of the people watching this, um, <clears throat> there are people in your company using the same product line, the same compensation plan, the same marketing materials, and they are having a higher degree of success. So you really want to be successful. You just got to take responsible and say, okay, this is my business. I'm going to stop looking at external factors. I'm going to stop trying to assign blame when things don't go the way I would like. Instead, I'm going to modify what I do. What, what skill do I need to learn? What lesson do I need to learn so that I can be more successful? Law number two is the law of dynamic duplication, which is the formula. And we've talked about this many times. We empower a large group of people to perform a few simple actions consistently over time for a sustained period of time. Three parts. One is you got to have enough people. A large group. You can't sponsor two people and wait for them to make you rich. Simple actions. If you think that you're going to teach everybody your $500 AI course and your uh, $377 ebook on social media marketing and um, four hour training, some no, 
a few simple actions using external source tools that anyone can duplicate. And then you need to do it for a sustained period of time. You can't get all excited, do it for 30 days, disappear for a couple of months, and then come back and think things are still going to be rolling along. They're not. Make a commitment that you will do the business at least 10 or 12 hours a week, being coachable, following the system, and you will do it for one year before you go back and evaluate and make a decision about your future. <clears throat> and I believe if you really are coachable, you come here to this channel, you go to duplicationnation.com, there's a weekly update email. There's a lot of resources there on the business building page. If you follow those systems at the end of the year, I am confident you would say, of course, I want to do this for the rest of my career. Number three, the law of the drunken orangutan. <laughs> um, we have a you know little joke we say in the business. Hey, if you're talking to a candidate and your lips are moving, you better be pointing to a tool, a booklet, a brochure, a video, a three-way with your sponsor, but some external source. It can't be you making the presentation, you making the points, because that can't be duplicated. Some of you are amazing. You've been in your company for a long time. You could riff for two hours on the compensation plan. Some of you can riff for 10 hours on your product line and every ingredient and where the ingredients are and where they're in the physician's desk reference and how they were used in ancient China and how they're using them in India and how they cure this disease and that disease. You understand that's never going to duplicate. It's only going to get you into trouble. So I created this title because I believe you want to get to the point where a drunken orangutan could get to the, at least the first rank in your comp plan just by pointing and grunting, <laughs> right? So they got a flip chart. Ooh, 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 right? Every time they flip a page, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and they should be able to get to the first rank without ever speaking a word, just point and grunt. Um, so that speaks to how using external source tools allow you to duplicate stronger. Number four is the law of creating culture. And what this law says is that grinders employ tactics. Network marketing rock stars employ culture. They create a culture of integrity, a culture of professionalism. They create rank advancement culture. They create a culture of passion, intensity, urgency. When you create culture, then you don't have to teach people what to do in every one of 250 million different possible scenarios. When people know what the culture of a team is, they know how to act. So when you create a culture of integrity, when a situation comes up like, oh, wow, there's a candidate here at this presentation and the person who sent them is from another state or another country. And I wonder if I should try to steal them. If you know the culture of your team is that's not the way we do business, then you don't even have to ask that question. Number five is the law of over the line. I could also call this the law of hope to belief because it's based on this fundamental principle that I've been shouting from the rooftops for a long time now, which is hope is what gets people in the business, but belief is what keeps them in the business. And when they get over the line, meaning the line from hope, because when they join, they hope to win a new bonus car. They hope to win a trip. They hope they could get a big bonus check, walk across stage, get the pin, whatever the case may be. At some point, 
this transition happens and they don't hope anymore. They believe they don't hope things are going to happen. They know things are going to happen because they've been doing it. And now they realize, hey, when I actually work 10 or 12 hours a week, when I'm consistent, when I block off time for invitations every week in my calendar, when I follow up with people after presentations, when I use tools for presentations, when I'm active, when I model the behavior, my group grows and I break ranks and my bonus check goes up. And you, you develop that knowledge that this is going to work. And the pivotal time for that, for a lot of people, usually happens at major events where you meet the corporate team, you look in their eyes, you shake their hand, you meet the top field leaders, you hear people sharing their stories from the platform, and there's a story that matches your own. And suddenly you realize, hey, if she did it, that means I can do it. So that belief, that's the point. We get them over the line. Uh, a few longtime followers of my work remember the book, Making the First Circle Work. That's the theme of that whole book is, hey, we got to get them from hope to belief, because if we get them to believe, they're never leaving. Doesn't matter if a top leader takes a deal and goes somewhere else. It doesn't matter if there's some negative publicity or there's an overzealous government regulator who overreaches. They, you know, back orders go on for weeks. If they know it's going to work, they're not going anywhere. Number six, I call the law of the stage. And the stage is the physical stage at events, and it's the online room where the streaming events are. And the law of the stage states that your group will explode when they see you in the spotlight. They will develop pride in the team pride in you as a leader. Uh, one of the other jokes we like to make is we say, hey, the person with the clicker makes the most money. If you're the person on the stage clicking through the PowerPoint, okay, and here's how you earn in the generational matching bonus. That's the person who makes the most money. The people say, well, I, I don't like to get out in front. I like to be under the radar. I'll be in the back row. The, let the other people get the stage time. That actually stunts your growth of your organization um, because people don't take pride in being on your team. And it's having that pride in the team that really keeps people into action. So I'm sure you've heard of the law of attraction that, let me tell you what the network marketing equivalent of this is, and that's the law of attracting rank. The law of attracting rank. What this says is the you will attract the people and circumstances which are in alignment with the energy signals, the level of consciousness the posture that you go out into the world with, whether online or offline. So this means your image, your posture, your professionalism. Um, and I call it the law of advancing rank, of attracting rank, because the level of your posture when you interact with someone is going to determine the level of of rank, they have the potential of achieving in your company. In other words, if you go out there vibrating at a lower level of consciousness and everywhere you go, it's in a t-shirt and sweats, sweatpants and um, you don't really take care of yourself and you're not living healthy, eating healthy, drinking healthy, you're not high energy, you're going to attract people that are going to come into your company that will achieve the bronze rank or the silver rank or whatever the beginning ranks are in your company. But if you go out there, you know, looking like a million bucks, 
you will attract people who will come into your company who have the potential to qualify at that diamond or triple diamond or national vice president or whatever the top rank with your company is. Um, and the, the hack to make this work is daily self-development. If you practice daily self-development, you don't answer the phone, you don't answer the door, you don't leave your house until you have your consciousness vibrating at a high level. Those are the kind of people you're going to attract into your life. Uh, number eight is the law of laser focus. And this law states that you kill distractions or distractions will kill you. How many times you get calls from people, hey, I just saw on uh, Facebook, uh, this ABC company has this new bonus on the infinity level down. You know, that's a distraction. Hey, you know, I just heard on the news that the interest rate is going down, the prime rate, the economy. That's a distraction. What you have to do as a leader is every time somebody in your team gets distracted, you got to laser them, laser focus them back to their objective, what they should be focused on at that moment, which is, hey, when is the next moment that you can get a qualified candidate in front of a presentation? Let me say that again, because this is one of those million dollar truth bombs that if you really get it, it's worth a million dollars over the course of your career or more. So anytime your people are getting distracted, get them lasered in on what's the objective, which is, hey, when is the next moment you can get a qualified candidate in front of a presentation? I learned from Coach Richard Quick, uh, put a bunch of athletes on the podium, college level swimmers, Olympic athletes. He always told them, hey, swim in your own lane. Don't worry what the swimmer in that lane is doing. Don't worry what the swimmer in this lane is doing. Just, oh, I've got fireworks on my uh, <laughs> Zoom meeting. Depending on how you move your hands, you get special effects. So for you guys watching on the YouTube channel, you get to see that. You know, don't worry about those lanes. Swim in your own lane. Numero nueve, <laughs> excuse me, the law of closing. The law of closing states that, <clears throat> as we know in physics, every action has a corresponding reaction. And it's simply physics. The harder you close somebody, the less they will duplicate. The more techniques and closing techniques and closing uh, hacks you use and, you know, reduce to the ridiculous close and manipulating them with neuro-linguistic programming or sales techniques to force them to make a decision. All that stuff does is allow you to enroll more people who eventually drop out without doing the business successfully. You don't, you don't want to do that. Just bring in people who want to do the business. I don't ever, like my, my, my sacred premise with my business is I don't ever want to be making a presentation to somebody who doesn't want to be there. I will never beg anyone, try to close someone, convince someone to come to a presentation. Now, I love it like when I'm doing a meeting or doing a two-on-one -on for one of my team members and they got some really negative, skeptical person. I love, I take that as a personal challenge. Like, hey, when I'm done here, that person is, they're joining because I'm going to get them to see why? Because I believe it, right? I'm the guy who was a high school dropout who became a multimillionaire because of network marketing. I know this shit works, okay? You're, nobody's going to talk me out of this. Nobody's going to be like, well, maybe. No, I know. I don't have hope. I have belief. And I can convey that when I make a presentation.
but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to call people on my list who are like, no, I don't really have time. I, you know, I've heard of these MLM things in their pyramid schemes. Okay, great. Good luck. God bless. May the force be with you. I don't have time. I'm looking for critical thinkers, people who understand the concept of leverage, people who can think independently, who recognize, hey, the corporate world is kind of a big scam. The government the system is kind of a big scam. Uh, nobody's going to take care of me and my loved ones. I need to take personal responsibility for my financial future. Those are the people that I want to talk to. So the law of closing is stop learning all these sales techniques and closing techniques. Instead of closing people, open people. And the way we open people is we give them an education. We educate them about the benefits of our business. We present the business, the product line, the compensation plan in the most compelling way with integrity, without exaggeration, without distortion, without manipulation. We present the benefit because the benefits are good enough. Guys, we got a business here. You pick the people you work with. You choose your own hours. Very minimal investment. Great tax incentives in most countries. Incredible life transformational travel opportunities. You become successful by helping other people reach success. You get to be a social entrepreneur. And there's no limits. We don't, it doesn't matter if you're man or woman or trans or young or old or educated or high school dropout like me. Network marketing doesn't care about all that stuff. All network marketing says is, hey, show us you're willing to do the work. So be out there with that, loud and proud. But don't throw the pearls before the swine, right? If somebody's not open to it, hey, move on. Come on. It's just uh, you should never chase after buses or candidates because there's always another one along in a couple of minutes. All right, number 10 is what I call the law of the 25th level. And this really in, you know, goes into law number two, um, the law of the drunken orangutan. It really brings in a lot of these um, fundamental principles because <clears throat> what this law is about is that every action you take to grow your business, you make the decision whether or not to do that activity by asking the question, can someone on my 25th level who has never met me in person take this action and get the same results? That's This is another one of these million dollar truth bombs, guys. Can somebody on my 25th level, who's never met me in person, they've seen me on stage at the convention, they saw me on a Facebook Live or a Zoom training call, you know, if they model my behavior, if they do what I'm doing, will they be able to produce the same results? And once you get that, your whole business transforms. Because... Now you can't build by your incredible charisma, your incredible gravitas, your incredible track record, your incredible you know, cult of personality. You only build using tools and processes that somebody in the 25th or 35th or 65th level can do just like you do and get equivalent style results. When you really get that, your business will transform, right? So if you're a radio personality and you've got uh, 100,000 people listening to you on drive time every afternoon and you do a commercial on your radio station about your business, how would somebody in the 25th level do that? and get the same result. They can't. The fact that you're an MD and a PhD and you've got 
six other degrees and <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm my allergies are getting me today. Ah. Um, you know, the, the, you got an MD, PhD, five other degrees, you started 10 companies. <clears throat> okay. How somebody in your 25th level, they don't have that resume. So you got to do the business in a way that they can duplicate. And that means instead of you making your 90 minute presentation on nutrition and nutrients and wellness, you point to a tool, a video, let's say, or a catalog, let's say, that somebody on the 25th level could do the same thing. All right. I hope you really found this helpful, and I hope you will share it with your team. People have been in a month or two. This is the time they need to learn about these laws because... If you're going to do the crime, <laughs> you better be willing to do the time. And we don't want our people having to do that kind of time, right? We want them. We want to make this business as frictionless as possible, as ease as possible. We want to give them tools and training and systems that allow them to get the best results. So... If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to the podcast and check out duplicationnation.com. Lots of business building resources there. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Go out there and be amazing. Peace.